I am the first Pandaren monk, the traitor who brought all of you these gifts to see if you will eat each other. My bomb fist, my slicing legs. Level 21 Temple Mount. I am unstoppable. I have 10 pieces of jade remaining. Not easy to find. You will know me by my white, fluffy rimmed bamboo hat and my sun drop sentinel bow. Ask the drunken brewmaster if you seek me. But no, no panda has seen me in many years. Outside the Lost Mountains, you find the goat. He's nearly the greatest of all time, or so he thinks. But even he is unworthy to get in. The map of Pandera is a lush green paradise hidden inside a vast mountain range. The cave entrance is guarded by a giant mountain man. Even from the inside, the hot air balloons cannot get out. Despite this, there are many watchtowers and secret valley shrine alarms. The Pandaren love their lands. Yak mounts carry them and help them carry their crops. They use all the lands here to advance their temple mounts. While they're fishing, kiting, even meditating. Temple mounts are spirit temples the monks hold inside themselves that increase speed, strength, and combat, using them as shortcuts in battle. Each level is able to hold multiple abilities, like a different dojo for on each floor. Each dojo, you learn many things. The monk is able to use multiple floors for more than one action at a time in which they picture themselves doing the ritual on the corresponding floors. The stronger the monk, the more levels accessible and can be achieved. Only the strike action is seen outside the temple. Masters are able to utilize all 21 floors. Floors 1 through 21 Level floors 1 through 13 are martial arts, physical abilities, learned skills. Level 14 through 20, spiritual abilities become physical strengths, leaping as high on earth as in your temple, 21 stories max, 189 feet high. Mind controls, pain disbursement, higher faculty perception visions and flag armadas equal ghost flags that appear on the field that mimic your attacks like a shadow clone style level 21 gives control over nature deities elements and natural disasters Fire, cloud, wind, lightning strike, earthquake, cloud you can use fog screen, smoke signals, wind you can use flight, push and pull, lightning you can strike, and power equipment. Your roof is dependent on your strength of will. Each room holds a different aspect for abilities. First, you think of what you need, then what kind or how you need it. Begin doing its dance. While you're targeting, you have a few options. You can release it before first full power, you can use full power, or you can keep power after the release for multiple releases. The higher your temple mount, tower the more you can leap over you can only do one dance per room each time you have to stop before you can begin the next dance 
Mastering temple mounts mean you learn how to dance in more than one room at a time. And since the dance and targeting is in your head, it allows your body to do what it needs in the real world, where you build your individual charges. You need to release oh, the charges you need to release. The release manifests itself as its properties. In level 16, you can make yourself as light as a butterfly. Use the room walker, the you inside yourself, to build a statue of yourself as heavy as you are, and then begin to smash it to rubble. The more you smash off it, the less your body will weigh. You won't appear to be losing weight, but you'll feel as if but, you'll, but everyone else will feel it. To everyone else, you'll feel as though you haven't lost a pound. In level 1 and 21, you can use your room walker to begin running. Every step you take in the room, you don't have to step in the real world. In level 1, it takes as much time to reach a thousand steps as it would for you to in the real world. You don't need to use all of them at once. At level 21, you have a fast forward from level 18 and can reach the same thousand steps in a fraction of the time. Level 21 also allows you to surpass the thousand steps through 2100 gives you a long distance teleportation. The pandas here are peaceful creatures and prefer to settle things by fixing the opponent's troubles. They know many things like steam powered engines and alchemy, but don't let this fool you. The mountain man guard here is to protect everyone from entering. Bears will be bears and on a bad day a panda is no exception. Their artillery comes from mastering multiple things while competing against themselves and friends. Not only fighting. When one sheath. Oh. When one sheathes their weapon. It becomes what it is. Some are libraries. Some are temples. Some are shrines. To access functions and knowledge. And, or experience. In which you are able to enter and utilize. Guests are permitted only if you allow them. The Ice Moon Splinter Library Staff equals a fully functioning library with scrolls, scripts, talismans, and books on combat, physics, and special attacks. Temples or, temple or shrine weapons appear where needed as needed. All unsheathed weapons that get sheathed, even if the monk or guest are still inside during the change, the building and ingredients disappear from around them, instantly leaving them unaffected, unless the weapon was violated and, or manipulated to harm them. When the weapon is unsheathed, it, was a, it will appear in its owner's hand depending on the weapon, ready for use. Be it a blade, or staff, or whatever item best holds the building in, in, in cases. Hidden in the midst of this enormous landscape is the Jade Spirit Temple. It is not a temple mount or weapon. If you can overcome the Guardian, It'll overcome the Guardian's one billion strains of jade stone grass, which with every brick, every tile, every shingle of the temple is made of jade. Thousands and thousands of pieces in this small area. Every piece of jade might still hold one wish for each unused piece. It becomes unusable if already used. Wish wisely. Carry as many as you can because you never know if it's been used until you try. Warning, evil pandas will sell you jade 
as if it holds an unused wish. So as such, like the J Temple Guardians, these are not easy things to compound, leaving them to go to other the other two places of power and put themselves as the most formidable adversary. Lanterns, the extra equal extra energy or focus when added to the monk's abilities. The more lantern temples you visit, the more lanterns you are able to master and obtain. The monk carries them like summonings, some inside, some in hand, some invisibly, ghostly floating around its owner, depending on its duration, in which when summoned they appear where desired and uh, unleash what you choose. Only you gain the effects for as long as it can and can't charge, it can't change after you decide what type. So when you pick it, you pick which one you want because you don't get to choose again unless you get another one. Or if you're in dire straits, you can prove yourself noble and worthy. You can ask the yaks who will stand up on the two feet, still carrying their tented seats. It will decide if you can hitch a ride with the magic girl on the badass three-wheeled bedazzled bicycle to the land of the gods and dragons. Here you will reach levers near the monkey king from the journey to the west. But beware, in the spirit world, it is not your lush green plateau. You may never return if you are not as worthy as you thought.